We're in the state we're in health-wise in this country because we've been eating poor quality food for so long. We found cancer in my colon and I reversed that through diet. The spirituality of how we live is, is unity. It is together and we're only as good as how we grow each other. Hello and welcome to Mystics of the Heartland. I'm your host, Mickey Hay. In this series, we explore the intersection between spirituality and various disciplines such as science, nature, and faith traditions. Join me in my conversations with community members and thought leaders as we explore how ordinary people live everyday spiritual lives. Mysticism, hmm? Is it something mysterious for just a chosen few? Is it having a vision? Is it hearing voices? Or is it just an awareness of the presence of God in our everyday life? The word mystic, for many years, when I was younger, had a very um, mysterious, um, that's somebody else, you know, perhaps Joan of Arc, or someone leading a life that I really couldn't relate to. I think a mystic is somebody who is able to have faith, belief, um, respect every belief, and any faith with the same power that they respect the one that he have or she has. A mystic is somebody who just gets a panoramic view of, of the world and the universe and um, is able to maybe share that in some way with other people. When things are happening uh, in your life, in the life of others, uh, that there is a presence of God there. You just have to be aware and find it and live it. They have that connection and they've had an experience of some kind. Sitting out in nature and just getting an inkling of, wow, there's more than just getting up and washing the dishes and, and going to work. Or maybe it's as profound as a vision or hearing, hearing a voice. So it can, be, it can be any of that and all of that. A person who doesn't believe in God, it doesn't mean that it is no mystic. It's also mystic, and we have to respect that. And so the people who are very religious um, and try to impose their religions to us, they do from the heart because they believe in that, and we have to respect that part. constant awareness in contemplation of, of the world as a sacramental system, a sign of uh, where God is, why He is, and what He is for each one, and for the, for the world, for all of us. 
And that's kind of hard sometimes to, to say that about yourself because for so many years you're conditioned to, to think that's for a chosen few when all of those experiences are available to anyone, anything is possible, you know. So might this be something you could say about yourself? <laughs> Later in this episode, we'll explore the mystery that surrounds the afterlife. But for now, let's talk about spirituality. Could something that we do every day, like eating, for example, influence or reflect our spirituality? I think spirituality is is a lever, is a lever of energy that I don't consider that your spirit is different than mine. Your spirit of, of the worst criminal is different than my spirit. The spirit of Jesus or the spirit of Mother Teresa or the Buddha or anyone is different. Spirituality to me is this connection with whatever you call the power of the universe, spirit, God. That is the field of potentiality. Deeper than just a connection, being an actual part of it. That it's in me and I'm in it. And we're all one. Talking about Mother Teresa or Jesus or they are more elevated. They are in a level of energy that is, is I cannot consider that all, many other human beings are in there. It's possible. Everybody can have a, a, a different thought on what spirituality is. Just like there's an infinite of everything, it's one's individual perspective on how everything is connected. A feeling that you have inside, you know, belief, um, comfort, you know, con you're content with knowing that there's a higher being and you, you bond with that, you know, to me it's God, you know, he's my higher being. I, I have full trust in his plan. Everyone aligns with their spirituality, the way we intersect in the world with um, our higher purpose, with each other, how we want to live our life. Now, religion is a whole separate thing, um, but the spirituality of how we live is, is unity. It is together, and we're only as good as how we grow each other. You have to live a full life of humanity, and that means living a deep life of the spirit as well. Working with the bees, how critical they are connected to the whole planet really opened up a lot of different perceptions of what I see now. Imagine here, the spirit, the energy of the spirit, and here we are in Earth. Spirituality is the path that allowed me to get there. The criminal have the possibility to get there, but they decided to stay here. I believe that God created us all and that we have a purpose here. And if we don't have that spirituality connection, if we don't believe that there's a higher being or a purpose, or believe in something, then what is our purpose? And we don't, we're not truly happy. And if we're not truly happy, physically our bodies aren't either. We're in the state we're in health-wise in this country because we've been eating poor quality food for so long. And um, even food that was advertised as being healthy is really not. You treat yourself better when you know that you're a gift and you were put here for a reason. It looks fabulous. And if you mistreat yourself, that's really mistreating a gift on earth, you know. So you take care of yourself better and you're, you're more aware of what you're doing to yourself and you respect that and you have that bond.
things seem to happen when you're you're giving good in the world and you're receiving good. If you're negative all day long, you're going to notice you're attracting negative forces. Connecting with however other people do, but for me it's with God and through prayer and just being lovable and showing that to other people and caring and having compassion. I, I think about things that I'm led to do and taking the cue from what starts to happen. I think sometimes in our spirituality, we try to figure things out. Um, even as a nurse in wellness, you know, we try to make wellness happen, but we're not that powerful. For me and for everyone else, I think it's so important to learn how to listen, be guided. I mean, without bees, there's there's no world. Without humans, the bees can thrive. <laughs> but without bees, there's no trees. And there, it's just a domino effect of negative recourse. There is literally energy in food. The longer it sits after it's been picked or butchered or whatever, and the more you do to it, or the more you package it, all that energy just gets eked away. And so then you have none of that energy to put in into your body. I want to know how that food was grown, what it was fed, because I want to know what's going in my body. I try to eat organic as much as possible. Making bread from scratch, actually kneading it myself, not putting it in a bread machine, is a mystical experience. It's this very earthy, basic, I'm making this and this feeds my family and I took these ingredients and I'm using my actual hands to do this. It's such a hands-on process that you can't help but get connected to it, you know, on a, on a deeper level. Humanity and human qualities are also very present and very important, and through that we reach the divine. I'm Buddhist. I believe that we're only as healthy as our neighbor and our friend and the guy down the street. And so looking at how we're interconnected, it's not only healthy physically, but socially and spiritually as well. Healthy living encompasses many activities, such as taking good care of your skin, eating whole foods, practicing yoga, or meditating. Do any of these activities influence your spiritual life? Well, my work as a nutrition consultant with my clients or with groups of people enables me to educate people about this whole foods philosophy, but also a healthy lifestyle in general. It's the water we drink. It's how we spend our free time, how we relax, how we recharge. So that healthy living can encompass meditation, yoga, taking a walk, being out in nature, all of that. Um, and then there's that spiritual component. I have had lots of clients who I know I can talk to about that spiritual aspect. I can just drop little comments, you know, in my consultations because we are multifaceted beings. We're not just bodies and organs. We're not just minds. It's the whole person that I'm educating and helping and supporting. I have always been interested in good, clean food, whole foods. It goes way back to when my children were first born, and it's evolved over the years. It just got to be more and more important to me to feed myself and my family in a healthy way. And feeding myself, feeding my family, leading a healthy lifestyle, and teaching other people how to do that is definitely a large part of my spiritual life and practice. I feel like it's made me a healthier person to be more intentional about um, how I perceive food and what I do with food in my life. I've always been very fond of um, natural and organic foods and the growing of them and production and selling of them.
I'm completing my, you know, overall、uh, education about how food is grown and how food is sold and the relationships there. And so I found this to be kind of a, well, another another aspect of that whole spectrum of、um, farm to table. I did not completely ignore things, but I didn't pay prime attention to those things like you do when you're, you know, real ill. When when your body is telling you something, Cecilia, don't ignore it. <laughs> don't take time. Like you, you, I never wasted time. Thanks be to God. But I might have, for instance,、um, put time on a TV program, and I don't. Feel there's time now for something that's not important. I might spend time socially that I don't need to now, although social time is necessary and we have that here. But it's not just socially; it's got something a deeper meaning to me now. Don't waste any time to see it. <laughs> yeah. We make homemade things every day: homemade soups, wraps, sandwiches, and it's good ingredients. It's not the overly processed. My、uh, son, when he was 15, I brought home some organic potatoes to cook, and he had no idea they were organic. I just threw them in the oven. He started to eat these, and he said, "What's different about these?" And I said, "What are you talking about? <laughs> these are the same way I always make them." He said, "No, mom, there's something different." And I said, "Well, they're organic." And he said. Have we ever had that before? And I said no. He said I can tell a difference. Organic can be a little bit more expensive sometimes, but I always tell people start with one thing in your home that you love that you have to have. If it's milk, buy organic milk, and it's made a difference. Everybody looks healthier, feels better. We have more energy. It really is that life force in food. You're getting the full nutrient value. For me, it's not about money or wealth. It's about a service, you know, and my purpose here, because God will provide for me if I'm fulfilling my purpose. There's a inspiration. Sometimes I don't even know at the end of it. How did I know to say that to somebody? And I just happened to get right where I needed to with them. And it's that one thing that helps them heal. It's not my hands, you know, and I'm just a servant. I'll I'll walk through any door that's open, you know. If I have to, it might not be easy, but I'll do it. <laughs> After all my problems, we found cancer in my colon, and I reversed that through diet, strictly through diet. Nothing, you know, no conventional medicine through herbs and building my immune system. And by losing my brother to cancer as well, I have such a fire for that. People struggle so long with food and their health, and they think, "Well, if I'm trying to lose weight, I can't eat food, or it's the enemy." And for me, I took this beautiful thing of food and creativity and paired it to healing and feeling better, and then it all came together. When you analyze the products that are in the market, are full of chemical, full of harmful chemical. Many of them are carcinogenic compounds. Being honest for developing something from my hand to bring in the market to people and say, "Well, I know that it is something that you can use. I use that every day myself. I've been developing something that is good for good living, for healthy skin." Uh, without lying. For some, helping others to heal or to live a healthier life is how they practice their spirituality. For others, the conscious use of time is what's really important. But what happens after this life when there is no more time? There are many views on this. Some have even had a glimpse of what may be waiting for us on the other side.
Our bodies are a vessel in this time and space for our souls. When my body is done, uh, worn out and, and gone, my soul will go on and find another body. So I, I guess to put it bluntly, I believe in reincarnation. There are certain things that I have an affinity to in this life, and I have to believe that that's because of some experience I perhaps have had in another life. Fears, anxieties, and pleasures too. I mean, all kinds of things that you wonder where that comes from. And so possibly it came from another, another life. I don't want to make anybody to be afraid of this, or I don't want to offend anyone, but, uh, but it is, um, I think it's going to be another life. Happiness or, or suffering, but it's going to be another life. And I consider that it is, um, I'm working hard not to be a suffering life. <laughs> that's that's what, I, what I think. Well, I believe in heaven and hell and purgatory. Being Catholic, you know, I was raised to believe that we all have our choices and, you know, if we follow the right path and we repent, you know, throughout our life and at the end of our life, then God's going to provide us with, you know, eternal happiness. And so what I think happens is that we are just on a different realm. I think there's like, you know, there's um concurrent planes, if you will. We just become a lot more aware of all of that. And as we share, like, being around the plants, etc., we all become part of each other. And I think death and the end of this physical thing, which is really kind of a mirage, just helps us transcend those barriers in a new way. And, and as I say we're connected, I don't really mean we're connected. I mean we really are one another. Yeah, so that's how I see it. I became ill about a year ago, year and a half ago, and um, had had uh, wonderful health all my life. Went to the doctor one day because I was becoming more ill, and he said, oh, you should get to the hospital right away. The doctor is saying, you are very near death. Um, the heart is shutting down, and the kidneys, and the metabolism is uh, not working, and so on. And then I don't remember the next five days or so I was there, they tell me. I can recall being in a beautiful temple. I can see the columns on either side. I don't know what kind of a temple, but it was massive and beautiful. And I was standing at the entrance. All behind me was darkness, and my feet were stuck in the darkness. Beautiful light, and the light wasn't static. It was moving in and out and around. I didn't want to stay here in the doorway in the dark, and there was something drawing me. I don't remember hearing anything, just this sense, this awareness of this powerful pulling into that light. The strongest impression is the sense of immense strength, that extraordinary sense of something beyond myself, very strengthening, enlightening, a joyful embrace is what has lasted. Later on, after this experience, some friends came. They said, Cecilia, we were, we were praying you would not die. And I got very irritated at them. And I said, now, oh, why did you do that? Why didn't you leave me alone? I didn't want to leave that situation, you see. And I realize now that it was kind of an invitation to become deeper into my relationship with God, whatever that meant. Of course, the search for that intimacy, that relationship that I had a glimpse of, you don't experience that kind of a thing, um, except through God's grace, I think.
Join us next time on Mystics of the Heartland, where we'll explore topics such as business, healing, and the arts. I'm Mickey Hay, your guide on this journey. Thanks for being with us. We are